Yeah, yeah Dev Inks. Yes, bro. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. That's good, that's good. Good, good. good. Um, what, what names do you go by? Is it just Dev Inks? Um, Dev's. Uh, my best friend Wax calls me Sosa. Um, Why Sosa? He was into Chief Keef from young, <laughs> so he just always oh, just called me Sosa. Um, I say that's about it, really. Devi, Devington, Devchi, but yeah, Devs, Devinks is what he called me still. Cool, cool. And what, what are your socials as well? Um, at Devinks, um, on everything except for Twitter, Twitter has got underscore. Cool. You do TikTok or? Yeah, yeah, but TikTok's yeah? Devinks as well. Okay, right, I was right, able right. to get my name on TikTok, Instagram, just not Twitter. Oh, fair enough. Someone took it. Yeah, yeah fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right. And you own, um, is it Prolific Tattoo Studios? Yeah, I cool. own that. We can um, find that on Instagram as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, Prolific Tattoo Studios underscore. You can find that on there as well. Cool, cool. And where, where's that based? Um, West London. Um, it's a private tattoo studio, so it's not like on a main road. It's just private. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So if someone wants to tattoo you by you, how do, how do they go about it? Appointments only. Um, appointments only and you have to email. Email me. I replied to some DMs mm. and I feel like they're serious, but more time is email. I feel like email, you can really tell if someone's serious or not. Yeah, so fair Definitely enough. email. Yeah. Definitely email. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so what is it exactly you do? Um, I'm a tattoo artist from West London. Yeah. 29 now. I've been doing it for 11 years. Um, I bought a tattoo kit off eBay for like fifty pound, um, and I just I tattooed myself. I tattooed people in the area, um, and just build up my name from there. But to go back a bit before the um, tattoo kit, when I was in college, no, when I was in school, I told my teacher when I was fourteen I'm gonna be a tattoo artist. So yeah, I told my teacher I was fourteen to be a tattoo artist, and then went to college. My third year, by lunch break, I was. Gone, tattooing. I was in the morning by lunch break, I'm gone. But next day, where was you? I was tattooing. Literally, bro. I literally just got a pass and then just went straight into tattooing from college. That's wow. basically where it started. And then um, as time went on, I started to... Um, I, was, I was at home tattooing. Then my boy Wax had a hostel. Went to his hostel, tattooed in there, like on the low. And then when he moved out of there, I started to go houses. So I was charging at like 120 to go south. South was like my base. Mm. Always in South Tattoo, 120 up. I was there and then um, mum let me come back home, just one person at a time. My work started to get, <coughs> sorry, that bit better. Mm. And then, um, yeah, mum let me come back in the house. And then from there, I just elevated, really. Nice, it's yeah. been a journey, man. 11 years, it's been a real journey. Oh, sure. That's good. Yeah. So how do you, so you just bought a kit off, off eBay? Yeah, it was probably How much was the kit back then? Fifty pound, bro. Yeah. My machine now is twelve hundred pound. <coughs> okay, just right, for right. my machine. So like times have changed, but yeah. at the time, it did the job for me. Just doing little tattoos and stuff, earning a little twenty pound, thirty pound, fifty pound, then they added up. You know, everyone was coming to me because I was cheap. But you know, you got to elevate. You can't stay at the same level forever. Yeah, for real. So real. yeah, fifty pound tattoo kit changed my life, and I'm I'm known for an orange pill. So I tattooed an orange pill yeah. that says love, and then I put like that compared to what I do now as a comparison, and it went crazy on Twitter. Okay, right. So if you know me yeah. for years, you know about the orange pill. Okay, okay. Definitely. definitely how, sure. So, all right, so you grab a tattoo kit, and how, how do you practice? How do you kind of get started? Um, I practiced on fake skin. Like I said, an uh, orange pill or orange. I used the melon. I didn't use like pig skin like some people suggest. All right. I just didn't touch that. I just did line work on fake skin and stuff. Um, and I've tatted myself, um, I tatted a star on my leg, I covered that now, I've tatted my forearm, and then just tatted people in the area really, you know, and then just worked up from there. I went and got tatted by like more experienced artists yeah. to learn, so I saved up my money, paid the money. So every time I'm there, I'm just learning and learning and learning, right? So yeah, that was, that was the key, key for me to get tatted by other artists to learn. That's so, good, yeah. Yeah. So if you're just starting out and it's like, you, you want to do practice. Mm -hmm. Who do you, you kind of, how do you start getting clients? Because obviously people might not trust that you. No, of course. You know, years course. ago, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back then it was like word of mouth, just posting stuff on my Instagram, or Snapchat, um, just me practicing. And then someone would be like, oh yeah, come, like, you can do it on me. A yeah. lot of people like, was like, yeah, bro, just use me, like, just guinea pig, boom, boom, boom. 
All right, I see you. You know, I've, I've covered some of my old work. I still see some of my old work. Some people still love it. Some people hate it. Yeah. It's just how it goes. But definitely, that's the way I did it. Definitely. So, could you always draw? Yeah. 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 Uh, I say it's perfected over the years compared yeah. to like back then. But yeah, I've always had an artistic, artistic view on things. So. Okay. Right. So. But you, you knew this is what you wanted from from a young age. Yeah, from fourteen. Just never looked back. Damn. I like. I've even had my name tried to be tarnished in the ends for doing tattoos but I just didn't let it break me mm. I knew I wasn't I know I didn't mess up you yeah know? Um, and I didn't let it break me it could have broke me and I said nah forget it but it didn't break me I carried on slowly through it you know life's about you know hurdles you gotta jump, yeah. jump over them for sure definitely. no definitely um, have you ever messed up a tattoo yeah yeah. Don't say, yeah, I've misspelled <laughs> but, you know, oh it's, serious yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a learning curve <laughs> yeah, though, right? yeah, yeah. it's like before I was like banging up tattoos. Now it's like, all right, cool. Take my time, yeah. you read over it, your friend reads over it, or my colleague reads over it, making sure if it's spelt right. Yeah. You know? Um, I've done ones where like I've stuck it on and I've realized, oh sugar, like we spelt something wrong. I need to change it. But I haven't tattooed it yet. Oh right, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. had that as well. That's all right, yeah. Um but now as obviously as time goes on you learn. Yeah, one makes mistakes. Mm. You know? Um you're only gonna get better if you practice. No, that's just, true. If you don't, if you just get to one hurdle, you can't pass it, you're never going to elevate. So it's, it's very important to just soldier through the failures, for sure. Now where, where does the general kind of inspiration come from As in, uh, for, for tattoos? Um, since I was a kid, I've just always loved art. And I just thought, I'm not into graphic designing, I'm not into architecture. Like, I mm. just love the thought of like art and skin. So I mean like the design, sorry. Like the designs, oh, the designs yeah. of what I oh um, yeah. inspiration more comes from like the the clients the clients will tell me what they want and they give me a uh, creative flow mm. to create what I want okay I see from yeah. based off what they give me so they're just like do your thing they trust me yeah um, I love the clients that just let me do what I want because um, they know what they're gonna get but I always put that extra detail in mm. the extra shadow the extra yeah mainly the extra shadow extra element I always put into my work for sure. All oh, right, so that kind of puts you above. Yes, that. certain artists it puts me above for sure. Mm. Putting that extra detail in. There's artists that are like mind blowing. That I'm like, I need to get to that level. Even though I'm here, I feel like I'm at a very good level. But you know, you can always get higher. Yeah. Always so, get higher. what what kind of artists do you maybe look up to or or you're inspired by? Inspired by uh, there's these, these guys in LA. Mm. Um, guy called Eye Shine. Guy called Devon. Um, even and then in London, there's a guy called Matt that I look up to as well, Matt Lynn. Um There is another one, I can't get the name at the moment, but yeah, there's a few that I look up to for sure. Um, but I, 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 like, I'm waiting until I go to LA to get tatted by those artists. I've been tatted by Matt, mm. you know, so it's like I'm ready to really like take it to the next next, next stage. So. No, fair enough. How, how many tattoos do you have? <sighs> I just told people I've got a whole like. <laughs> whole front, whole back, arms, and I got my right leg done. Okay, right, right, so right. I, I don't know how many in total. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I got that, that much. And you got so plans left, for more? Or? Yeah, my left. I need to finish off this leg here. Yeah. And then I want to get this leg in the States. Okay. Save my left leg for the States so I can network and meet new artists and stuff for sure. Oh, right, that's a good way of doing it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. No, oh, fair enough. Do you get um, kind of up and coming people coming to you All asking the time. for advice? And yeah, yeah. Um, I try my best to give them the best advice. I try not to leave anyone out. I know mm. how it feels, especially if I can see that they're pushing themselves to get better yeah. and not just doing it just for the money. I see that you're an artist. Mm. I'll respond to you. I've had people come and just shadow me. Um, I'm always trying to help someone. That's just my character, bro. I'm always trying to help someone. So, yeah, I've got people hitting me up all the time. I've even been asked to do seminars in the Caribbean just all to right, learn yeah. how I shade, techniques I use. So, so it's a good feeling that people want to come to me because of where I've come from, you know? Yeah, because they've seen your work, yeah. yeah. Correct. No, that's good, yeah. yeah. Um, can, can artists collab? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah? definitely. Um, funny enough, uh, me and my brother collabed. So my younger brother oh, right. tattooed as well. Oh, nice. So I did the forearm, he did the outer forearm. So that's oh, our I first, see what you mean, yeah. It's our first collab. But there are artists that do like, say for example, full back, an artist will be in the top left, artist bottom right, top oh, right. right, left, right, left, left bottom. Just depends on like 
clientele that they have and people around artists around them. But yeah, me and my brother collabed. That was a good feeling. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's he's probably got into it because of you, or yeah, yeah. He yeah. changed his life around. Nice. Um, me and him are pretty tight. We only met eight years ago when our yeah. dad passed. Uh, a year later, he came out. You know, and the maddest thing is like when my sister told him like, "Oh, your brother's Devin," he goes, "I know, I know who that is." Like. Oh, right, I don't know right. him personally, but I know him from the area, like just from the area, because you don't live far from where I was, I was living. Yeah. And obviously, um, he's got, he was down the wrong path. Um, and then, obviously, once he met me, his, his, his uh, mindset changed. Mm. And he started drawing again. And I was like, bro, you can draw. Like, you know, he's telling oh, me good, you can yeah. draw. And I'm like, all right, bro. I'm like, I can't paint, bro. He can paint. Oh, like yeah. he can draw colour and pencils and not for me he can do it yeah. so I said why don't you channel it into something positive like tattooing like I got you bro I got you like we can do this so literally he's been tattooing for two years now he changed his whole life around bro nice yeah. his whole life around man proud of him still he's pretty good yeah yeah I can't yeah. lie he's, he's good yeah he's yeah good yeah. man he's good he's only gonna get better he has the moments where he's like oh I don't know about this one like mm. but I say to him bro at the end of the day you're, you're elevating you're learning like you're better than this person who's been doing it for like five six years yeah because yeah. you've had me Shadowing you, you're only going to elevate like this. It took me 10 years to get to where I am. It's taking you two. Damn, yeah. So it's a good feeling for my brother and for myself as well. I can imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of the time people are, are quite, they're quite hard on their own work yeah. as well. Which is, un it's understandable, but you have yeah. to, that's why I was telling him, he's like that. I said to him, you have to kind of like step back and be like, all right, cool, I could have done better here, but it's a good piece. Yeah. I know if they come back, I can rectify that. Yeah. So always look at it like, I really messed up. Like you can always rectify it. Always rectify it. So I tell him that like, you're perfectionist. That's mm. good. But sometimes if you feel like you look at back at the picture and it's not where you want it to be, yeah, just wait till they come back and just add it. It's no problem. Yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes sense. Um, you said that you 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 kind of met your brother how many years ago? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. Um, when that was a bit later on in life, wasn't it? Mhm. Mm he was. He was what? 19 or 21 I think about that yeah or oh, he was just about turning 20 yeah mm. literally so how come you met him kind of that that late as well um my dad had loads of kids man I was a secret till I was 12 all right um then I came out what, what do you mean a secret to you 12 as in like um basically he had me yeah and my brother and my sister who are twins all right six months apart so then like I was like the as you, like Jamaican say the jacket. Like, I was the outside child. Yeah. So that's why no one knew me till I was twelve. Okay, I see. But then no one knew my brother until he got older. There was kinda like wind about him, but no one really pursued it. Yeah. But then obviously when my dad passed, my sister went and pursued him. And he's the splitting image of our dad. All right, Mannerism see, yeah. and everything, but he's, he's our dad. Like <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So crazy, bro. But yeah, that's the main that's how we met. So that's why it took so long as well. So how did it feel kind of finding out, what is it, brothers and sisters that you found out later on? Well, it's because I knew about the older ones, I didn't know about the younger ones. So there's another one after my brother. Oh, right. As well. But me and my brother, um, my name's Karim, we're like really tight. Like we're really, really close. Um, it's, I've loved every minute of um, having him in my life, really. Mm. Because I have a brother that I'm close with, someone around my age. Yeah. You know, it's important because my older brother, my mum's side, he's, he's like, 39 big man like our age are like difference in age, difference yeah. big difference so like having a brother that like i've gone on holiday with i've gone parties with i've tattooing alongside like it's amazing yeah definitely amazing man definitely, definitely. no that's cool and what, what age were you when you kind of you know discovered you have you had brothers and sisters um from young man my mom always told me i had siblings i just never oh, met right. them yet yeah i just never met them yet um but when i did meet them it was you know it was good yeah it was good we're not like we're not like close but like we talk when we talk you know and then like my brother like Karim like me and him are really close like we talk like every day mm. every day we're talking and we're with each other nearly every day as well and we've traveled like to travel with him as well was, was wicked as well man showing him different life you know yeah what he's used to you know it's good, it's good that's nice though yeah. yeah 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 sure um what's what's your background then uh, the Jamaican Jamaican and Bajan Barbados all oh, right, right. But more time I'm in Barbados. That's where, like, is it? I'm always in Barbados, like, twice a year. That's home for me. Because I tattoo out there. Um, I'll be shipping cars out there. It's another adventure that I'm venturing into. So I've got another car to ship. But I've got one out there already. 
that's another venture for me. Um, but yeah, I'm just always I'm always on that side of the world. I'm never really on this side. Mm. I'm always travelling. So. Okay, so that's like second home to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Caribbean so how, sure. how do you go about shipping cars? Is it in containers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about like just stripping it down, sending it over, getting it built back up. Mm. Um, it's like that. Oh, you actually break the car down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send oh, right, cars, right. Build it up. And then yeah, it's good to go, really. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. And you have to get certain cars or? Um, yeah, certain cars you have to get, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but um, it's one of the like, I've always wanted to do it. So yeah. me and my uncle do it. And me and my uncle are very close. Oh, nice, yeah. So yeah. like we do it together. And it's a good little venture that we have for sure. Yeah. Definitely enjoy doing that with him. I think it's better working with family if you can, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like I said, I do that with my, my uncle and I do tattoo with my brother. Yeah, that's sick. You yeah. Know, so it's good, man. It's a good unit I've got there for sure. Mm. Definitely. So no, no, you don't visit Jamaica much? I've been here once, bro. Is it? I do want to go back, though. But it's like, you just, you see in Barbados, I can be so free. Like, I was oh, walking right. around in Barbados, like, two years ago with my chains on. My brother's like, bro, you can do that. Like, in Barbados, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Jamaica, you can't do that, bro. <laughs> I'm not walking around with nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Like, you got to be very careful. But in Barbados, you're more free. Okay, right, yeah. right, right. But my brother experienced that when he came to Barbados with me. He was like, bro, like, I can actually just walk around. I don't have to worry about... That your surroundings. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good feeling. So was it just a lot safer? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, there are stuff that goes on in Barbados, like every other country, but for their tourism, they look after their tourists. Mm. It's definitely a place I'd recommend anyone to go. Oh, fair enough, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. If a young person wants to start out as a tattoo artist and they want to kind of see it as a career, what, what would your advice be? Where do, where do they start? The same place you did? Um, I'd say, like, if they can get an apprenticeship, get an apprenticeship. Okay, right. Um, it does help and push you a lot more. I didn't really have help. So I had to do everything on my own. Mm. I don't regret it. it, made me who I am, but having yeah. an apprenticeship is definitely important, especially if they're willing to help you and they don't uh, try to take advantage of you. Mm. Very important to have an apprenticeship. Because then you just look around so much artists that have different styles. You can learn, you can say, no, I don't like line work, I want to do shading. Mm. I'd rather do shading, realism. It's just to have that surrounding is good. So I'd say definitely an apprenticeship to go for. Um, and just ask for advice. Some other artists, some artists are like, don't want to give it, some artists do. Um, but I'd say like, save up and get tattooed by more experienced artists, mm. just so you can learn. Like, you never know what you can learn, man. I've learned so much. Like, I get tattooed yeah. by artists and I'm just like, how far out, how far out have you got your needle? Like, what technique are you using? I do that 11 years in. Yeah. Always trying new techniques to better myself. You know, trying to learn new things for sure. So I'd say definitely an apprenticeship though. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. But where, where can you find apprenticeships? It's is it colleges or? Nah, it's just literally walking into the studio. Oh, right, right. Or, you know, well, uh, knowing someone that's in there, coming for a portfolio. Um, mainly that really, it's not easy to just get into, to be real. That's how a lot of people do it on their own. That's what I did on my own. Because I mm. went to someone and they wanted to charge me £1,500 to learn. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, I had like £10 in my name. Yeah. Maybe even the £50 to buy the kit, that's all I had. So yeah. I couldn't learn. But it's crazy because as years went on, I've covered his work. So I don't do cover ups no more, <laughs> just FYI, but I've covered his work. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why, why do you do cover ups anymore? I don't like them, bro. A lot of people feel like, for example, like a colour feather can cover something black. No, it can't. Oh, right, I see, yeah. They feel like they want to put like a lion over something dark. It's like it's not going to work because a lion is so light with the shading. Yeah. That can't be dark. It has to be like something like a skull, butterfly, tribal. That's why a lot of people have the thing. Have you seen them people that just black out their arm? Yeah, yeah. Usually because they've got rubbish tattoos in their arm. Oh, right, So they just black it out. Well, they just scribble over it, essentially. Literally, they'll just scribble. Serious? Just shading, black, All black right. arm. That's what a lot of them do now. All it's right. It's becoming very popular, though. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people just black out their arm or their leg because they don't like the tattoo. Would you, would you do that? Nah, that's boring, man. Just <laughs> hate this all day, bro. Nah, I like my, I like my realism. Yeah, sure. fair enough. Have you ever said no to a job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, loads of times. Yeah. Or no to a certain design? Yep, loads of times. What? I won't sit there and do what I don't want to do. Yeah. I got to the stage now where it's like, um, it's, it's for the love of the art, mm. the love of tattoo, and it's not just for the money. Yeah. You know, I've been in that, I've done it for the money. You know, like, from time to time. But I'm at the stage where it's like the last few years, it's like, nah, man, I want to do what I'm going to put 100% into. So if I have to wait a few days for someone to get what I want to do, mm. then I'll wait. 
But that's what I'm saying. That's why I got my brother now. It's like what I don't want to do, I can push on to him. And I've done that. Yeah. You know? And then he's executed it. Amazing. Oh, that's sick, so now man. that's his client. It's never, oh, that's my client. Give me some. That's yeah. your client now. Okay, nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep it in the family. I'm not like trying to like, take his money or nothing. Like, that's your client now. Oh, that's, that's how cool. I work. If you weren't a tattoo artist, what, what would you be? Because I know you done it from such a young age as well. I've always wanted to do football. Is it? Yeah, I've always wanted to be a footballer, but I went semi pro, like 16. No, no big team, just in the area. Semi pro, that was good. My Achilles went. And I said, that's not for me. Oh, fair enough. Went straight into tattooing, bro. If I wasn't doing that, I don't know, it's probably something to do with cars. Cars? I love cars. Yeah, I love cars. It's probably something to do with cars. Okay, right. Um, but I just felt like tattooing was, I was meant to do it. Mm. For sure. Definitely meant to do tattooing. I feel like I was meant to do it, yeah. No, that's good, man. Because like, on, honestly, it's hard for certain people to kind of know what they want to do in life mm-hmm. or, what, or what they're good at. Mm-hmm. So you define that from, from a good age is, is good, yeah. From 14, everyone says from 14. Yeah. I was like, yeah, bro. Literally. Like, I, just, I was studying it, watching videos. What I was doing then, my brother's doing now. Yeah. Watching videos and learning techniques. He'll call me like, yo, have you seen this video? This guy's doing it like this. You should try it like this. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let me check that. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Let me try that. Yeah. I'm never like, oh, because I'm this level, he's this level, I'm not going to listen to him. Yeah. No, a lot of people are like that. Just because you're under, um, he's under you, mm. doesn't mean that he doesn't have knowledge. Yeah, it's he's true. He's doing stuff that you stopped doing. So there's new techniques that have come out, and he's like, bro, there's this, there's this, why don't you do colour, like, try this. And I'm like, cool, I'll try it. Mm. You know, so it's, 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 it's a good thing still. Definitely. No, that's good, yeah, yeah. Does it feel like work sometimes? No. No. Okay, right. No, right. I lied, I lied. It feels like work, I've got to do it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels yeah. like work. If oh, I okay. don't do it every day, then it's just, it's, it's like chilling with your friend. Yeah. You know, like your friend comes, you've got music on, you can put on a podcast, you can put on a movie. Ah, right. They're having like a conversation with your client, they're telling you about them, you're telling them about you. Yeah. You know, a lot of my clients, like we speak, I mean, it's like a therapy session. Yeah. I give my advice, I might need advice from them. Like, and then we're just tattooing, making art. Like, it's just chilling, chilling. Job, so. Yeah, that sounds cool, man. Definitely. For sure. Um, so, like, I, I haven't got any tattoos personally. Mm-hmm. Is it is it quite painful? Is it quite... What? Uh, um, different parts of the body is painful. Yeah. I'd say a lot of people start with their arm. Yeah. It's not too bad on the arm, but like, when you start, like, going, like, your chest, your ribs, even your leg, it's, like, the pain threshold goes like that. <laughs> and I must say, women sit better than men. What, they take it better? They, yeah, they, they take the pain All oh, right. Got better women, pain threshold. Yeah, yeah. Women go through, like, how much pain, bro? Yeah. You know, their yeah. the, the monthly cycle, the, the waxing, eyebrows, tattooing is nothing. Pregnancy, tattooing is nothing. Wow. So we miss it better than men, for sure. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Obviously, there are some women that are like, it yeah. hurts, but women are way more stronger than men. Oh, serious? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. And you get um, kind of a lot of different clients, like woman, female, which it all depends. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of like, I get black, white, Asian, mm. um, but I like that. I like the fact that I can do different skin tones. Mm. If someone's wanting about black skin, you've got to be very careful, with, very careful, because they can keloid very easy. They can what, sorry? Um, keloid. Uh, what's that? Keloid scarring. Yeah. Oh, you know, right, right. Um, that can happen if you overwork the skin, because I have done that. Because yeah. um, like, you'll, you'll be packing in the black, right? Yeah. And obviously you're putting black on black. So it's like, the more you, like it looks like it's, you coloured it in and it's like sugar, like it's not it doesn't look coloured in, so you keep going over it, keep yeah, going over it. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. You wanna scar it. It's like it's like uh, I see a guy who's like paper, you punch like six holes. And if you keep punching one hole, it's only gonna get bigger, right? Mm. It's like black skin, bro. You keep punching it, it's oh, just gonna right. scar it, scar it, scar it. And I've done that. Now I've learned to like okay, cool, it's not fully black, cool, come back. You've got to come back oh, and right. go over it one more time before I scar your skin, let it calm down. Hill, I'll go over it again. Because it, it, it can happen. I'm not going to sit there and say, like, I, I haven't done that. I have. But I learned from it. Yeah. I know how to deal with it better now. That's interesting, yeah. 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 Because obviously, I'm, I'm learning a lot about the different, like you said, there's different techniques. Mm-hmm. There, what is it, like shading? There's the lines. There's. Yeah. Even like how you shade. Yeah. There's so many different types of shading. You've got the pullback, you've got the, um, I never say it right, pendulum, and it goes back and forth like this. Yeah. That's my favourite. That's why I get my smoothest shading. Okay, right, right, right. Um, there's that technique. Um, there's people that can shade with just like, say for example, like a, just a normal pen, like that what you've got on your hand. Yeah. 
people can just shade with that, bro, as a needle. All right. I find that difficult because you have to be very precise with that. Because I used to practice drawing with biro pens and I could see, like, okay, like, it's not easy. Yeah. So I use, like, a magnum. So a magnum, you can say, is like, say it's like this. It's about that long and it's called a curve mag. So I've got 15 needles in that. But it doesn't look like 15. Yeah. But then I use that to shade. All right. That's what I prefer. Okay. So there's like there are different styles and techniques that you use to shade. Damn, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people don't know about like I don't know any of that. in depth, like yeah. Well, there's a, there's a lot of in depth that goes into it that people don't understand why they charge clients. Sorry, artists charge what they charge. Yeah. Because there's a lot goes into it. You don't see behind closed doors. You just see the stencil, tattoo, and done. Yeah. There's so much preparation that goes in behind it, bro. No, fair enough. Yeah. yeah so so would you have to draw it out before as well? Yeah. So what I do is I collage images together. Okay. So you'd, you'd say, okay, Deb, I want a lion with a woman's face and a rose. So I would put a lion, woman's face and a rose, merge it together, add certain little elements to it. And I send it to my client before. Yeah. A lot of artists do everything on the day. I get why, because a lot of people like to change their mind. But my clients, I like to give them the design before so they can make changes. I can change it. So on the day, we just tattoo and we go, we just start. Yeah. That's why I prefer to do it. It works better for me. As an artist, I don't mind doing it in my free time at all because I can be designing, watching TV. I send it to them. I want to make this change. Okay, cool. I'll do it in my own time. We still have a few days to your session. The longest part is the stenciling though. The line stenciling to stick on, that's the longest part. Yeah. But it's therapeutic for me. I like doing it, listening to music, chilling. Like, that's why I like to do it. So I don't, I don't mind doing it beforehand. Have you um, tattooed anyone famous or anyone that we might know? Uh, I, I always say, because he's my cousin, I tatted, um, his name's Marcus Callender. He was in Power. Oh, right. Season three and four, he played Ray Ray. I always say him, because his family, he's my, he's my first cousin. Yeah, say him, yes. him for sure. If we're talking like UK, why well, I tatted Nave Smalls, I tatted Sneak Roll, uh, I tatted Hardy Caprio. Um, that's the first thing on top of my head. Show Shallow, we got Show Shallow, I've tattooed Show oh, Shallow, yeah, that's yeah. my guy. Um, that's about it really. I'm not really into like tattooing like famous people, influencers. I'd say the best person that I've tattooed is Andrew Spate. Andrew Spate? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I tattooed cool. him like five years ago. Yeah. And he would only, he says he would only get tattooed by me. He's been asked by other artists to, to get tattoos from. Yeah. He says no, I'm going, only going to dev. You know, and that, and that means a lot to me. Yeah, definitely. You know, and like when influence come to, influencers come to me and they're like, oh, can we collab? No. Andrew's bait gets ink from me. Yeah. And he pays me. Yeah. He's trying to get a freebie. The difference of level is very different. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'd say Andrew's bait and probably my cousin, for sure. No, that's good. Yeah. 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 So you, you, do you normally get that sense of loyalty where people say, look, I'm only using you from yeah, now yeah, on I get that. Whatever. I yeah. get that from a lot of clients. Even a lot of clients say that they, you know, like they're willing to keep coming back even when I make my move. Yeah. Um, and that means a lot. If they come, they come. If they don't, look, I say, I, I'm, I'm not one of them people where I'm trying to like uh, keep them. It's like, look, my brother's here. I've got this artist here. If you can't come to me. Yeah. I'm never like, that's my client. Don't go nowhere else. I'm not trying to gatekeep them. It's like, I try to put people on. It's the type of person I am. Yeah, that's good, um, man. So... Yeah, but my loyal clients, I do have loyal clients. I've got a guy called um, AD. Um, I've been tattooing him for about six, seven years now. Did all of his ink. Wow. All of his ink. And he, he'll only come to me. But he's like, when you, when you make your move, I'm going to go to your brother. And I'm like, cool. It's family. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but that's like, good. someone like him, I, you know, love and appreciation for, for sure. Nice no, place, yeah. 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 So what, what can we expect? Like, if I want a tattoo from you, how much do I expect to pay? Or it just depends what it is, or what's the range? More time, I, I charge from £800 up a okay. session, depending on detail, size, and stuff, £800 up. But when I get to the level where, like, when I hit the States, mm. yo, that man, they're charging 2500 for the day. Serious? What I'm doing here for eight plus, they're charging 2500 for. Damn. But yeah. see, this is the thing. I have had people that say I'm too expensive, and I've had people that say I charge too little. Yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. I know where you are right in life, you're right in life, what mm -hmm. you can afford. I'm trying to be with the people that can afford, that want to pay me more. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. A, it's a level. You know, I've had the people that would pay me, like the people that I tied years ago, I'd always look after them. Mm. Like I can put up my price on them, but just for loyalty, I'd rather not. You pay a bit more, 
and you have to wait, but I got you. There are a lot of people that don't see it like that. They just feel like, because I'm here now, I forget them. No, 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 no. I don't forget you. Yeah. Even if I see you on road and I've tagged you years ago, I'm like, bro, wow, like, yo, come, yo, come see me, like, come yeah. get more ink, bro. Like, I got you, like, I'm going to look after you. You came to me from when a lot of people didn't want to come to me. Yeah. Like, I hold that very, very highly with certain clients, for sure. Definitely. So, loyalty is a big thing to me, for sure. No, that's good, man. Definitely. Um, you said you tattooed Show Shallow. Yeah. You you have a track room as well, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did a trade that offered him a tattoo. Well, I tattooed him first. All oh, right. <laughs> and I said to him, bro, like, you know, show your show shallow, like, I can do this rap thing. Yeah. Like, do you want to, like, trade? I gave him a tattoo for a verse. I've done a lot of trades in my days of tattooing. Traded for a phone, <laughs> traded for rims, or a car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trainers, I've traded before. It's a, it's a, that's why I'm saying tattooing is, like, to take you everywhere man so Get anything you want but yeah show shallow definitely um yeah we made a track together that was fun that was good um big up show shallow for even doing that with me for sure it meant a lot to me still so like we still keep in contact still talk here and there so yeah big up show shallow for sure oh cool cool no i like his music as well yeah. um talking about music then how long have you been doing music um and it's rap isn't it yeah, yeah. years man i'm going back to like I never forget, I made a track um, at my youth club and I put it on Facebook and my best friend, uh, Wax, he, he DM'd me. He's like, bro, this is sick. Come to my studio. I'm like, all right. <laughs> we've known each other since we were kids as well. Yeah. But then from there, we just got closer and then that's when we just started making music together. Just music, 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 music. music. But like, I, I kind of fell out of love for it. Um, I just do it for fun if I feel like it. Um, I wanted to push the whole title what is rapper thing. But I'm kind of, I'll be wrong, I'm kind of past that now. It's just other, other ventures I want to take. But mm. music's still in my heart. I love music. I'm an R&B head. If I could sing, like, I wouldn't tattoo. That's what I would do if I didn't tattoo. Yeah. Sing. If I could sing, I'd be like a singer, bro. I'd be Chris Brown or something. Like <laughs> that. I would do that, yeah. But music, yeah, for years, man. But it's just for fun, man. It's just for fun. I'm more focused on tattoos and then just getting different streams of income. Yeah. For sure. But, I mean, who, who would influence you in the music industry? Music. Um, or, or what kind of made you get into it? You said it was Wax as well, your friend. Yeah, it's just... Um, I say I always wanted to... I remember I had a 50 Cent album. Yeah. I used to just read the lyrics on the back of the thing and just like rap. I just loved it. Then I just made a little rap, put it on Facebook and then... just And then being around Wax and seeing how talented Wax was at rapping, I was like, I want to be talented like that. Because he's very talented. Yeah. So I was like, I want to rap. Like, I want to do something different, innit? I want to do both. So I'd say probably like Wax. So I'd probably say Wax, to be fair. Yeah. The reason why I wanted to get into music properly. For sure. No, fair enough, yeah. Now, what, what are your thoughts of kind of like the, the rap industry in the UK? Um, I like it, man. Um, I really do. I, at the moment, I've been listening to a lot of Young Tef. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I can resonate with some things that he's saying. Well, I don't live that life, but some things that he's saying is like, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get where you're coming from. Um, That's interesting, though. A lot of people don't don't say, wouldn't, well, wouldn't say young stuff, yeah. I just, I just think he's cold. Yeah. Like he's very talented. I agree. And when you yeah. listen to what he's saying and his wordplay, mm. a lot of people, they don't look for the wordplays. I look for that. I, don't, like, I look for that and flows. Mm. I feel like he's, he's very talented in what he does, for sure. Therefore, at the moment, there's been a lot of young Tef. If I was to move over to the drill side... It would probably who I listen to is probably Trap and Heady, K Trap and Heady one. So I listen to on the drill scene. Um, when it comes to like R and B side, I'm like a Joe and Donald Jones fan. I grew up on them for my mum. You I'm sorry? Joe and Donald Jones. Okay, right, I grew right. Up with, uh, listening to them for my mum. Yeah. Um, that's on the R and B side. So definitely them too. And what about America? American rap? Nipsey. Nipsey, That's okay. Nipsey, bro. Um, I've even got his lyrics tatted on me. Prolific Tattoo Studio is called Prolific because of him. He's got a, a lyric, um, I'm prolific, I'm so gifted. Yeah. It's always, it's always like stuck with me. I've got it tatted on me as well. Um, definitely Nipsey. I like Rick Ross. Um, when you talk about rap, they're just, they're just bosses. Like, you know when I feel like I'm a boss in what I do? Yeah. And they're bosses. I'm like, all right, cool. 
that's what I want to like. I resonate to their music. Um, I listen to like, like I listen to a lot of Tory Lanes. Um, what's I listen to? Blast. Listen to a lot of Blast. Uh, Chris Brown for sure. Many, many of those those people I listen to on the regular, regular. But definitely, if I was to go, it would definitely be like Nipsey. Yeah, yeah. Just because of what he stands for, you know, like that. So, so Barbados, mm-hmm. you're actually flying out. Is it uh, October, isn't it? Yes, for I'm going for a tattoo convention yeah. with my brother. Nice. So we did it last year. That was his first convention. That was my first convention. So that was a good feeling, and to have him over there was a good feeling as well. Um, I came first in large black and grey. Nice. Um, what, what, what is that, sir? Uh, it's a category. So black, large black and grey is basically like most of the stuff on my Instagram. Just a big. That's it. I did my friend's big like leg piece here. Yeah. Just the outside, large black and grey. Um, but it was a good feeling because a lot of people was like, I'm going back to Dev to see him finish that. Like, I want to get tired by Dev. I want to see that. I had loads of people surrounding me. Yeah. It was such a good feeling, you know. A lot of people in Barbados know me for yeah. tattooing, so. It's definitely like it's a good feeling. Like, even when I'm out, like, oh, bro, you're, you're wicked at tattooing, like, love your work. It's such a great feeling, you know? Such a great feeling. So, we're going back again for it, second time. I'm mm. um, really, really looking forward to it again with him. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it. Shout out Tattoo Fest Barbados as well, because they're the one putting it on. So, yeah, definitely. definitely. And that's the 7th or 8th of October, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's two, this time it's two days. Last year it was one day, this time it's two days. And then what can we see? Is it is it like loads of different artists? Um, yes, uh, yeah, there'll be artists come together. from the Caribbean, yeah. from like uh, Grenada, Trinidad, St. Lucia. And then you've got people from the States coming over as well. I think there's another artist from the UK coming over as well. Um, this one I feel like is going to be a bit bigger than the last one. Yeah. Last one for sure. So, yeah, it's just like loads of artists just come together, have their booth, they make their money. Um... People can choose who they want to get tattooed by. Some people tattoo every like more people as the day goes on. Yeah. But I'm just doing one person, just doing okay, one big right. piece both days. So, but it's a good way to network uh, with other artists as well, and just get advice from other artists as well. You know, because like I would love to get into color, but I'm just not like a super fan. But there's artists that are coming that are wicked at color. So mm-hmm. I tell my brother like, yo, we need we need to be chatting to these people. Yeah. Because they're really good at colour. We need to get into that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. How, how would you get into colour? Is it just kind of... It's is just, it di- just different ink or...? Yeah, so obviously you have different ranges of ink. It's knowing how to blend colours. Because yeah. my brother can paint, I know he'd be good at colour. Yeah, yeah. Because it's kind of the same thing as using a needle. Mm. You know, but it's kind of the same thing. So it's more just getting someone that's going to allow you to do it. Like he allowed, Our colleague allowed him to tap a peacock feather on her leg. I was mind blown. Mm. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I told him straight, I couldn't do that. How but come? That's just, I'm, it's just what it was. Or, yeah. Color is like, cause he's blending like dark green to light green, yellow in there. Oh, wow. And that's not, I can't do that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <quite good. laughs> if I practice, obviously I could get there, but like he did that. I'm just proud of him for that store. Yeah. Like, nah, that was me. I like my black and gray. Cause I, was, I started off drawing black and gray. So that's all I know. So it's a good feeling. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 And we have to talk about, is there a big move coming up? Yeah, yeah, I'm moving to Canada. Um, I'm ready for it. Um, I've always wanted to go on that side of the world. Yeah. So now I'm ready to make my move. I'm ready to try new things, meet new people, network, mm. and just start a clientele from the jump. I don't like the same routine. Yeah. Like right now my routine is home, work, home. I don't like it. Like, I'm very, like, every day is different. Even though it's different, I'm tattering different people, different designs, but I just want a different day every day. You know, I want to be like, all right, cool, next week I'm going, because my first stop, I'm, an, I'm calling it my tattoo tour. Yeah. My first stop's New Jersey. All right. Go there, tattoo for a few days, try to get some clients in, fly back, do some tattoos in Canada, then maybe hit LA, hit Miami. I've been making my little networks out there. So I was literally just traveling, bro. So I'm ready. I'm really ready for this move, man. That's nice, like, yeah. Really yeah. Ready. I've been doing it 10 years here now. And I just feel like I'm just stuck. You know, you just hit a brick wall. You can't get past it. Yeah. So I'm like, I need. I know I need to be over there for my career to excel. Oh, fair enough, yeah. 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 Okay, right. So you're going to go out and network. 
yeah. kind of just That's kind like, of build up as well. Yeah, yeah, build up clientele out there. Cause I'm on a, a um, I'm on a two year work visa. All right, yeah. So after two years, I can apply for a PR permanent residency if I want to stay on. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But at the moment, like, my plan is to stay there. Like, that's not my new life, basically. But why, why Toronto? It's easy to get into. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, if I could really go somewhere, it'd be like LA. Yeah. As a yeah. tattoo in a serious. But, like, it's kind of easy to get into. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, yeah, Canada for sure. Like, I got people there. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm really looking forward to getting there and just starting, starting afresh. Okay, nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then maybe wake, make your way over to LA or...? I wouldn't say go over there to live, I just want to go in and out. Okay, right, in right, out, yeah. In and out, in and out, in and out. Um, more like that. But then, like I said, I've got, I got family like everywhere, man. The main places I go, I have family. The only family I don't have is in Cali. Mm. I have no family in Cali, but like all the other spots like New York, Miami, Florida, like I've got family there. So I know when I go, I'm good. And where, whereabouts are you from now? Um, I'm originally from Blavet Grove, West London. Um, but I moved out, I live in Northwest now. Mm. Um, but I still go back and forth when my mum is there, so I'm going to see mum, look after mum when I can. But yeah, that's uh, so why Notting Hill is basically where I grew up. And what what was it like growing up there? It was, it was good, you know. Obviously, there's times where you can get, you know, deterred. Mm. Um, but I kept a straight line. Straight focus, bro. I could have really went left. It's not yeah. hard to go left when you're from where you're from. You know, I lived on a council estate. It's not hard to go left. But I just knew I had better dreams for myself. Yeah. Bigger plans for myself, you know. Um, especially the tattooing thing. I just knew if I stay on the right path, I'll get there. And now I'm here. Tattooing is fun in my whole life. My, my travelling, my cars, my, you know, uh, clothes. Everything in life is just tattooing is provided for me. Yeah. So I owe a lot, like, tattooing is, like, it's, it's life. I'll never stop doing it. Even if I was to, like, get, I don't know, win the lottery, it's still yeah. cool tattooing. Okay, I see, yeah. It's yeah. Cool tattooing, bro. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's yeah, good. I'm never going to stop it. So so I'm sure you saw other people, you know, taking different routes in life growing up. Yeah, yeah, I've seen people going on the wrong path. Yeah. You know? Um, it's kind of like, how does it feel? Like, it's a bit upsetting because mm. it's like we were here together. Yeah. But now I've gone there, you've gone there. But now, like, you have to be wary of certain people because they can be jealous and envy. Mm-hmm. Like, why, did I not, why, why can't I get there? Yeah. That's why your circle is so important. That's why a lot of people talk about the circle. Because your surroundings is what portrays you in the world, who you mm-hmm. surround yourself with, you know? So I try and surround myself with people that are, like, my level higher, especially higher than me. Like, I love talking to my cousin. I told you he's in power. I love talking to him because his mindset is different. His, his, his goal is different. Mm. Like, it, he motivates me more than he knows it. Yeah. You know, just seeing what he does with himself and how he moves. It's like, I, I, it's like an older brother, you know? Yeah. So it means a lot when I'm around him and just talk. Like, when I go, like, I was in New York the other day, sat down for like two hours just talking. We're in the car. We've always got a conversation to talk about. It's never just quiet. Yeah. It's inspirational. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I think people, yeah, people need that. And you're, you're probably like that to other people. Yeah, for sure. As well. Yeah. Definitely. Especially like, I feel like I'm not like that to my brother. Yeah. Showing him a different life, you know, putting him on the right path. Oh, definitely. Putting him on the right path. He's, like I said, he's on the right path. And that, you know, that makes me proud. I feel like I've done my job. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's just a good feeling that my brother has just changed his life and he's doing something so positive. Because he could have still went down the wrong path. Yeah. But he knew that he wanted to change. So it's a good feeling. No, for real. Um, so you making this move? What about what about the tattoo studios? Uh, the tattoo studios that still I have. Have? Yeah, yeah. My yeah. brother's gonna manage it. Nice. Um, we got two artists joining. Um, but yeah, my brother will be managing it for sure. So this is gonna really put him to the test. Yeah. For him to handle it, see how we can handle it. I feel do good. I think he'll, he can still call me, ask me for advice. He knows I'm a phone call away. Yeah. Because he still does that now. He's a bit he's a bit like, oh you're going, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I was like, <laughs> just call me. You know, it's time difference, but just call me, I got you, like, you'll be fine. Cause at times where like he'll be in the studio, he's got a stencil, he's like, just call me, like, is this right? Am I doing it? I'm like, yeah, it looks good. Or I'll be like, no, I'll change this, or you haven't stuck it properly, like tell him. Because yeah. tattooing like it's on the skin, it's on the person's skin for life, so he wants to be Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Cause at times where I've put on the stencil and I'm like, bro, what do you think? Just because he's down here doesn't mean I can't ask him. 
Yeah. He's got a different eye to me when it comes to certain details and stuff. Mm. So it's important to learn from each other no matter what level you're at. Yeah. Oh, My brother good. will be taking that over for me. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. But the plan is to open up prolific in like Canada or the States. Okay, so to so branch out and yeah. uh, kind of franchise, get, get, get another branch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's been pretty good, yeah. Hopefully have one in Barbados too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just branch out with them, man, for sure. I think, I think that's a good idea, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah franchise it. So what was it you like about cars? Have you always been into cars? Or? Yeah, yeah, I've always been into cars, man. Just really into like, just the customization. You know in GTA when you can just customise whips? Yeah. Did it all the time, bro. To the point where like, you know like you're customised, you'll drive it around, but then now you park it up, do a mission, come back, it's gone. You've got to do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mind it because I love customisation, yeah. yeah. I love cars. Like when I had, because I've had a, the last two cars was an X3 and a Q8, nice. customised them. Added black rims and tinted it, added this, added that, there's little things, you know. And then like my car in Barbados, mm. me and Mark, it's a fit, like if you see the difference how we had it to now, literally 160 brake on it, it's got a big end, it's got a big uh, exhaust so it makes noise, like when you change gear, wisps, like, so. Yeah, it's sick. <laughs> like, it's just having fun with it, you know? That's yeah. what I like about cars, just having, just changing and modifying it. Yeah, for sure. Nice, nice. Do they, do they drive on the left or the right? In same cars? side as us. Oh, oh, so it's easy to, yeah, to yeah. export cars, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They drive on the same side as us. Yeah, yeah, so it's easy. That's all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's good money in that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you leave it over there, <laughs> don't bring it back here because the currency rate will just mess it up. Yeah. It's best to yeah. leave it out there, yeah. So if you leave it out there, you let it grow, you add to it, then you know I can eventually buy land. Mm. Build on it, buy something, like build on it. You know, that's that's the goal. That is the goal. But are you sending them out and selling them, or or well, renting the them? Yes, I'm gonna probably keep, but I got a BMW mm. to go, so I'll probably sell that. Okay, right, right. Probably yeah. sell the BMW. And the cars are worth a lot more in yeah. Barbados, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Compared to here, yeah, yeah, a lot more, more for your money out there for them. Cause they don't have certain cars out there, so it's like, you know. They willing to pay for it because like no one's gonna have Barbados are very like they want to have the latest thing that no one has mm. you know so that's why Barbados is a good market even when you want to go and sell clothes and stuff mm. if they have it no one has it they're happy so growing up in in Labrador Grove I know just just a random question what's, what's the kind of craziest thing you've seen <laughs> I'll never forget <laughs> I'll never forget um I come back from school and there was this this one guy from the end was just bullying this taller guy I and mean, this guy is short he's bullying this taller guy and he just slapped him it's made him feel so little I'll never forget that I don't know why I'll never forget that I just I just felt so sorry for the guy because he's just sit, he's just standing there oh right like nothing in the man just slapped him and just yeah just felt so dread for him damn um, I think that's about it really actually not really clear. I wasn't really out like that yeah I was very in and out if I did play out I was riding my bike and then going home like, I wasn't really like in the mingle with like the young kids in the ends, because I knew like I'm not trying to bring no police to my mum's door, I'm not trying to get involved in something like I shouldn't be in. Yeah. So I kind of like stayed away from it. I was mainly just playing football, though. Going Westway, Green Pitch, just playing football every weekend. That was mainly what I did in the ends. Yeah, oh, so nothing enough. crazy. Yeah. Nothing crazy. What what age did you get the first tattoo then? 16. Oh, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> it's quite young, isn't it? Yeah. My mum my was funny, man. She let me get a tattoo, <laughs> but not an ear piercing. Oh, for real? Don't know why. But I got rest in peace, granddad, so that's probably why she allowed it. Yeah. I never forget, I sat in the chair doing it now, so shit, I felt like headed, man. Mm. So you have to give me some like Coke. I had that and I was like, oh, okay, I feel better. Co Coca Cola, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Coca Cola, and I was like, oh, sugar, like, I feel much better. Yeah. Then I ended up, when I hit 19, I ended up working with him. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah. yeah, man. That was a good feeling still, just to go where I come from. But yeah, my first one was 16. Then after that, it was when I was 19. Mm. Then this went crazy from there. So what was the the second one after that? I got an angel on my arm. Okay, right. Um, yeah, I got angel on my arm. Like she got her chest out. If the camera can see it, if you can see it, she she's got like cleavage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, yeah, I just like this angel. So I went with this. That was my second one. Yeah, nice. That one there. So that was my first granddad. Okay, right. Yeah. And then that was my second. And then from there, bro, it just went crazy. Yeah, crazy. Oh, that's that's good. At least at least you didn't get um, a bad tattoo at a young age. No, I didn't. I know. No, no. <laughs> I I seen a couple. <laughs> I even had a friend. Um, he got one done in Jamaica. 
Oh, and it was just, it looked like a, just kind of like a street prison ch- tattoo kind of looking thing. Yeah, so yeah, he was people young. just like, oh, the tattoo, I just want to get it. They don't think about the art yeah. that goes into it. Or that it's on your skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they end up getting it covered in a few years. I've had a few of those. Oh, have you had, have you had tattoos covered? Me? I've had one covered on me, but I'm saying like people will get a rubbish tattoo and then realise later, oh yeah, it's, it's rubbish. Mm. I need to cover it now. So you're spending 100%. X amount of money to cover it. <laughs> yeah. Would you get a tattoo of, uh, of a girlfriend? No, nah, I wouldn't get my girlfriend. You wouldn't? Nah, I said that it's bad luck. Is it? Yeah, it's bad luck, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's actually bad luck. Because I've done it for people. Yeah. And yeah, they came back to get it covered. But I speech them. I'm like, look, are you sure? Yeah. Because like, even if the boyfriend's there, I'm like, are you getting her name as well? He's like, no. <laughs> I think the wildest side. tattoo that I've done for someone is she was 19. Mm. She had his name tatted on her about five times already. Damn. And I did his portrait on her ribs. Just his mugshot on her ribs. And I tried to speech her out of it yeah. three times. Is it quite big? Yeah, it's about that big. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I tried to speech her out of it. And she just wasn't having it, bro. And she was young, like 19. Damn. And I said, like, are you sure? Yeah. You know what they don't hear your feel, so I hope they're still together. She hasn't asked to cover it. But... Yeah, I tried to speak to her out of it, but she wasn't having it. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. So that, that relationship probably didn't last, right? I don't know, you know. I don't okay, know. fair enough. I, she has never come back to me to cover it. Yeah. So I'm assuming they're still together. I'd, I'd be too embarrassed, though. I would be too embarrassed. I'd, I'd as have well. to go somewhere. Yeah, go, <laughs> go to another artist. Yeah, definitely. No word. Who is it? Blueface and. and How do you say her name? Krishan. Have you seen how many tattoos off Blueface and stuff that Krishan has? Yeah, she's I'm not crazy. sure if you follow her. Yeah. She, she's mad. I don't know why she would do that. Americans are different. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of trends going around of like women getting their man's face on their cheek, Damn. or the man getting the woman on their cheek, <laughs> or the name. Like I don't. That doesn't show love. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. mean you love someone getting their name tattooed. You know, it doesn't doesn't show it. So. Nah, I just would never do it, bro. I don't recommend any of you lot to do it either, bro. No matter how much the girl tries to pressure you, just say no, it's bad luck. Say I said it's bad luck. If you want us to laugh, don't get it. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's the best tattoo you've, you've ever seen? I've ever seen? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, maybe Uzi Vert's cover-up of his whole front and back. For real? From a guy called Ganga in LA. Um... But it was him and a few others, so like they put so in America, like in especially in LA, a lot of them get put to sleep on anesthetics. Oh, what to do to, to do the tattoo? Yeah. Oh, right. So they pay like 20 grand to get put under, Damn. and then there's about six artists just inking your whole body. <laughs> wow, and I think Uzi Vert's one for sure. Crazy, that's crazy. That was a crazy tattoo I've seen. No, I'll check it out. What about the worst? The worst, probably them tattoos you see on um. I want to say tattoo fix. There's another one. You know where the... I don't know if you've seen it, but like two friends go and get a tattoo and they don't know what they're getting? <laughs> yeah. I think that's the worst. Oh, that show, innit? I, yeah. know, I know you're talking about it. Yeah. You don't know what you're getting. They're, that show is brutal. Yeah. I, would never, I would never go in there. That is brutal. Some people lose their friendship over that. Yeah. I get the show entertainment, but that's not for me. <laughs> nah, I, would, I think they've they got to be the worst tattoos I've seen. Yeah. If you're no, talking about like what everyone can see, definitely that. Yeah. No, that's wild. <laughs> would you would you do a game show like that? Prolific Studios? No. Nah. <laughs> I wouldn't want that under my name. Maybe, like, maybe with, a better, with a better game show kind of rules. But yeah. You know, I would, like, even though I don't like cover ups, I would do tattoo fixes. Mm. But, like, they'd have to work with me because it's like you can't get everything. Like I said, you can't cover a, a peacock feather over something that's black. Yeah. Does it make sense? There are artists that can do that, don't get me wrong, but you need to specialise in that. Yeah. You know? If yeah. you don't specialise in that, you're just doing it because you can tattoo a colour feather or not. You're not doing it. So in order, in order to kind of cover a tattoo, does it have to be darker? Or how, how does it work? It, um, yeah, it has to be darker. There are some artists that can, color, that can cover with colour. Oh, I'm right. not going to say that they, there isn't, yeah. but it's about your application and how you apply it, how you do it, how good you are at colour. Hmm. Are you able to really cover that? You know? and, the art, and the client has to work with the artist. You know they will say the client's right yeah. or the customer's right. Sometimes not in tattooing because it's like we're artists. You need to let us be free. Freedom, so important. And that's what I tell clients: just let me just be free with it. Yeah. You know, because if you if you if you keep going back and forth and you're changing this, it's not working. Then I eventually do it. We're both not going to be happy. So I'd rather just tell you I'm not doing it. Mm. 
it's not about the money, it's about what's on your skin. Because my name's on that tattoo. Yeah. Devink did that. There's no way he did that when he did this. You know? So no, that's true. Those things play a big part as well. Have you ever done a tattoo that you just didn't yeah, want to do completely? Didn't want to do, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done that. I've done that. Right now, like, I feel like uh, it's the stairway tattoos I don't really like doing. Which ones? Stairways. Stairway to heaven. So All right. stairs, a man on the stairs, gates, clouds. Oh. They're coming as common yeah. as, like, only God can judge me tattoos back in the day and lying in roses. They're coming that common. All right, see, I didn't know that, yeah. So I kind of just sway away from them now. Um, I've done a few, you know. Um, but, like, I look at it like a barber, right? A barber does a fade, 10 fades a day. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to do it. Mm. When I, when, if I've got like three wicked tattoos to do that week, I don't mind doing that. If that makes sense? Because yeah. I've done what I wanted. So this is what they want. I can execute it. I'll do it. Yeah. So it's more like, like that when I don't want to do it, really. I just have to have a week where I'm doing what I want and then I don't mind doing it. Um, do you have any kids? No. No, no? kids. <laughs> no. no kids yet. Can't get trapped yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Is that my choice, yeah? Um... Yes, yeah, because I got a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff I want to do. Yeah, I don't want to just be like because when a kid comes, you know, life just kind of stops. You know, it takes priority. Yeah, yeah definitely. kids are a big priority. You know, so I feel like it's a bit more um, living that I want to do before I have a kid. Like, I want something something stable before a kid. You mm. know, like house. What they, I want to give them what I didn't have. Mum mm. and dad unit. You know, not no stepdad, stepmom. Yeah. Mum and dad are together. You got a house. You don't have to pay rent when you hit eighteen. <laughs> 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 you get me? Like you're yeah. good. Like you're good. Like that's my dream, and I'm gonna make it happen for my child. I want my child to grow up like me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm the same. I, I try to keep it traditional. Yeah. yeah. Um, with, with that being said, I think off camera you were saying that the average age of what having your first child's gone up now, hasn't it? Yeah, like thirty six now. Damn. People are having their first kid. Yeah. Like the age for women have got, that's the age for women has got up to like 36. Damn. So like, that's like average now. Usually you're like 25, I need to have a baby by 25, 28. Now it's 36. Yeah. Because women can pop up babies at, eight, at 40, bro. I know someone that's pregnant at 40. Yeah. So. No, that's yeah. true. Uh, do, do you feel like you're missing out though? No, because I just have hella nieces and nephews. Okay, right, right. Cousins, yeah. So I take them from time to time. You know, you take them and give them back. You know, that's that yeah. line. So <laughs> you feel like that, that's what I like. But. No, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I just know when it's my time, I'm going to be an amazing dad. Yeah. Just for the fact I didn't have that father figure in my life. So I know what I missed. I want to make my child miss that. Nice. You know, so that's what's important to me. Yeah. So. Are, you, are you religious? Mm, no, nah, I'm not really religious. No? no? Nah. Do, you, do you believe there's like a higher being or God yeah, or anything sure. like that? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But like, I used to go to church and that when I was a kid. But I haven't been church in years. I'm more mm. into like the spiritual side. You see the angel numbers and... Like, I don't want to get into it, but like, I'm a, I'm a flat earther. No. Oh my God, are you? <laughs> <laughs> See? I'm that's that's what I was going to ask you as well. I'm a flat yeah. earther now. Are you really? Yeah. I was around earth earther, but then my brother, like I say, he's been doing his research. <laughs> and he's hit me with videos and I'm like, okay, okay, oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. So what, what changed it for you? What, what made you go from the earth is round? Okay, wait, wait, first off, a flat earther is someone that believes what the earth is flat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what made you go from believing that, you know, it's round to now that it's flat? Like, what, what was it that actually changed it, your decision? The sun. Okay. When we look at the sun, right? Yeah. We feel like the sun goes down. Yeah. It's not going down, it's just going back. Damn. All right. So, when you look at a train, it just goes further and further and gets smaller, right? Yeah. Same with the sun. The sun just goes back and forth. One of my friends said, then why is it dark here and light here? If the, uh, if the sun is meant to orbit, mm. it's just going back and forth. It's lighting up America, for example, and we're dark, and then it comes back, lights us up, darks America. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. See what I'm saying? So, okay, so it's flat, then it's literally travelling yeah. across. Okay, travelling right, across, right, right. So it might be travelling diagonal, but, like, it's, like, obviously, can, we can get into it, but yeah. it's, like, that what made me realise, oh, sugar, like, and, and another thing was, my, my wax goes to me, bro, like, when you go to Canada, like, I want to go to Australia, meet me there. I'm like, but, bro, <laughs> you know I can't, you know you can't go backwards, right? 
Yeah. You know the globe? Yeah. But they tell us that it's the globe, the world. We, I should technically be able to go like that to Australia, you know? From Canada's here. <laughs> Australia's here. Yeah. I should be able to go like that, right? Yeah. Thinking yeah. Thinking about it. But you can't. You have to fly over Africa to get to Australia. You have to go straight. You can't go around. I should be able to go like that, bro, five hours. I have to go like that. And I was like, oh. I said it to him. He was like, yeah. You, you have to go. Like, that's what made me just like, okay, cool. <laughs> he's, uh, so he's over there smiling at me like, I told you. <laughs> but you know what it is, bro? It's, it's one of the ones where you have to do your own research on it. Yeah. We are, we are programmed in this world. Especially with this COVID thing, mm. we're programmed, bro. What, what did you think of COVID? I just feel like it was just a scam, man. A scam. To be honest, um, it's it's hard to say, man, because it's like, why all of a sudden now we can travel, we can do these things? Why did it stop? And like, our life changed, like, bro. It was like struggle for me. I just moved into my new crib, yeah. just got my own studio, and COVID hit. Oh damn! Yeah, I was stressing, bro. Like, stressing, like, what the hell do I do? I can't tattoo. But, so I was tattooing in lockdown. I went to my unit, tattooed yeah. in there. Next thing I know now, they've swiped my door. The, yeah. the, um, the council. Okay, right. Remember, it's meant yeah. to be two metres apart. Yeah. Right, so they've swiped my door. Seen I'm tattooing, closed my door now, knocked. I was like, yeah? They're like, you know you shouldn't be tattooing. You should be two metres apart. So I said, why are you two like this? Bro, I promise you they went like this. Wow. You're from a different household. You're from a different household. Yeah. Your household has been out of the park. Your household's probably in their yard. Why are you two allowed to, to work and st stand there with each other? Bro, they were silent. They just called a guy with more authority to come. He said, look, finish your client and don't come back. Just get the grants. I said, all right, cool. So I took that. But then that, that made me like, bro. And then when they were clapping on the bridge, yeah. I was like, I'm going to see my mum. <laughs> like, yeah. I literally just said, I'm going to see my mum. Like, this is a joke. It's absolute joke. Me and my client are perfectly fine. There's no coughing, there's no nothing, but I can't work. Yeah. So, it just, so yeah, it opened up my eyes a lot, COVID did. But that's what I'm saying, we're programmed. We're programmed to believe the earth is round. Mm. All the pictures you see of the earth are with an, e with an, an eagle camera. Eagle eye camera, sorry, it's always going to be round. When you look at it, so they say that's how the earth looks. So do you believe in the, what is it called, the feminine? Feminine. Yeah, the firmament. Is that now the, the globe it. on top, isn't it? I believe in it now. Yeah. Because I'm like, a rainbow. A rainbow starts here and goes like that. A rainbow should really just go up. But I feel like it's going over the dome, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, you can't go past a certain part of the world because there's something there. And like, you might think this is mad, but like, above us is water, and above that is the higher power. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is bro it's, the, it's what I'm seeing is just making so much sense I'm, if, when you watch these videos it'll make you think differently I'm telling you I thought the same I was like my brother nah man frown man I like, watch these videos I'm watching it I'm like oh sugar okay yeah. makes sense which, which video are you talking about the, what, the five like the five hour long ones on YouTube nah no, just TikTok <laughs> ones bro oh right right which right, right. TikTok ones. the sun one <laughs> Yeah. Really opened up my eyes, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't lie, the way you explained it is a lot better than what I've, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. it's just like, you think, I used to think it just goes down. He's just going down and going around. Mm. But he, the sun's just going back. Just going back, literally. Coming forward and going back. And I was just like, wow, it makes so much sense. So much sense. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a flat earther now, man. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> like, you, I might send you some videos and you decide if you want to change your mind, but it definitely changed my mind, for sure. My brethren Wax, he's still, the earth is round, but he's like, I, I hear what they're saying, but the earth is round, so. Yeah. Everyone's different, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> do you think it matters? Does it matter if the earth's flat or round? I think it matters for, to show people not to be programmed. Okay. Like what's going on in life. Yeah. They tell you it's that, don't mean it's that. Mm. Like, they tell you COVID is going to kill everyone. You get COVID, you're dead. And it kill everyone. Did, did you get vaccinated or? No. Yeah. <laughs> that was not touching me. That was not touching me. Nah, I didn't get vaccinated. No, not that kind of needle, yeah? Nah, not that kind of needle. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't get vaccinated. I just, nah, it wasn't for me. I said, I'm not taking, I'm not putting that in my skin. Yeah. I'm not putting that in my skin. Um, did, did you catch COVID? I felt like I did. Mm. But it wasn't like, I was like sick, sick. I think I just lost my, I lost my taste and smell. Yeah. 
that was that was very interesting when I lost that. Um, but then it came back. Didn't come back great, but it came back. Um, but no, I never had nothing crazy though. But I know. I think I know who I caught it from as well. <laughs> That's the baddest thing. But no, yeah, I feel like I did. I did. Because my mum was still working. She's a um, care worker. She was still working during COVID. She had gloves, masks, the, the hat, the, the shoes, like with um, bags on it. Like she was going in people's old people's houses and wow. looking after them still. You know, and I felt that them, my, my mum's kind of job, they need to get paid more for sure, man. They don't get paid mm. enough. They don't get paid enough at all, man. No, fair enough, because you put yourself at risk. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, constantly, 100%. yeah. Do you, do you believe in any other conspiracy theories? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe hit me with one. Um, let, me, let me consult. Uh, like the Twin Towers. As in like, People think it's all it's all set up, like America's done that like kind of thing. I can't. I've never really dived into that. I, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't want to meant, like comment on that. Cause I've never dived into that. Mermaids. Uh, I've never <laughs> dived into that either. Is that, is that a conspiracy? That that's they're real. Yeah, and there was one video that came out the other day actually. Yeah, where it went viral. I got I got to do some research on that, but you don't know what's at the bottom of the sea. Yeah, yeah. That sea goes down far. You don't know what's at the bottom. I think the sea is one of the largest things that hasn't been kind of researched yeah, or discovered and like as as much as we could. No, in fact. There's still a lot true. to see, yeah. So true. Conspir- there are some conspiracies like I just can't think of any at the moment. Mm. But there are some that I like I believe in, some that I don't. So depends. Like I said, it's what you want to believe in, you know. No one should tell you why you're wrong for thinking the earth is round. That's your opinion. Mm. You have your research, you have your beliefs, that's fine. You know, everyone just has their beliefs. And it's like, some people get into like big arguments and they want to fight each other over it. Just listen to me, I listen to you. And I guess one day, hopefully, we'll, we'll figure it out. out. Yeah. Mm. I look at it. With, with the, a lot of people that believe the Earth is flat believe that, um, I think the moon landing wasn't real. Yeah, I've, my brother <laughs> told me about that. Because he's like, because I was just saying, he, he said that like, there's people that have said that like, it's fake. Like, yeah. No one actually landed on the moon. It's fake. Yeah. Like no one's landed on it. But it's then, then, then you then, but then you look at it like, how far up is that rocket going? That they show on TV. Is that rocket really going up there? If there's a, um, whatever you call it, permanent thing. Yeah. How far up is that going? Is that really in space? That's where it's like, okay, is there really a space? Because you see the rocket on TV going up. Do you get me? So it's like yeah. you don't know. We, I'm, I've been told there's water. And a big dome, but then you see a rocket that's meant to go up in space. No, that's true, yeah. So you just, just say you just never know. <laughs> Don't I know think, what I think years later we'll find out, yeah. I feel like I'm we'll, sure. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. With, with you living in, um, was it Labrick Grove? Yeah. Um, was it quite close to Grenfell Towers? Yeah, yeah. I remember when it happened, uh, my phone was going off. Um, wow. If I went to like the fifth floor, I could see it burning. Wow. Um, and I remember I was just getting loads of phone calls, like, oh, is it near you? Is it your building? Da, da, da. I was like, no, what's going on? My brother and my mum's telling me, yo, it's on fire, the news. The next day now, you see the whole end is just flooded. I've walked to near it, and you just see it still burning, bro. It's crazy, like, to see that. What, even the next day? Mm-hmm. Like, wow. By the morning, I'm saying about, like, 11 o'clock, bro, you can still see flames coming out of some of the windows. Okay, it's that see, crazy, yeah. bro. Um, the ends really came together. It was upsetting to hear that some people were trying to like um, profit off it. Yeah. It's just sad. But it definitely was a sad moment for the for the area. Um it's just not like you just don't expect to see that, you know. You, you see it on TV, but to see it in your end, scary man. No, definitely. I mean did you did you know anyone that was kind Yeah, I knew of a few people or... that was in there, yeah. 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 Um my mum used to go in there and my mum did a job in there before it happened. Damn. Because a care worker, right? So that's she used to go in that block. Yeah. So imagine if she went there like the time when it was happening, bro. It was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You never yeah. know. No, it was scary. lucky that her, her client, her patient, sorry, was at like five o'clock, not mm. nine, you know? So yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was a scary time for sure. I can imagine, yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure the, what, what was the kind of general gist of, of everyone in the community? Like they were just kind of shaken up and. Yeah, very shaken. I think a lot of people came out to help as well. Yeah, a lot good. of people came out to help. Um, which was good. You love to, you love when you see a community come together and like Labrador Grove, Latimer is very diverse with like the culture. So to see all the cultures come together was good. Mm. Um, I think what I didn't really like was they tried, they did like 
a thing like they made like a, like some of the street like a party like food and party and I just didn't think that was right like a, it was like a mini 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 carnival yeah yeah food, so you mean part like music party and it's just like that's not it's kind of like a celebration isn't yeah, it? yeah and it's yeah. like nah man you still should be grieving like I just felt like that was I didn't like that that's the only plot of it I didn't like was that but but I say the community did come together though I have to say like like the growth like Amar they all came together and it was good. In life, just in general, what, what inspires you? Um, I guess it's just the fact that I can level up, just levelling up in life inspires me. Because mm. I've gone from, like you said, like I was saying, an orange pill to skin, to doing sleeves, to being recognised by people abroad, you know, for my work. Um, that inspires me a lot. Because I know where I come from, I'm not one of them people where like, I'm here now. Yeah. I'm humble, you know. I came from the ground, bro. State, uh, council of state. Mm. That inspires me. That humbles me. Like, because I'm making this move, I downgraded my car. I had a Q8. All right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a Q8, downgraded it, got 58 plate BM. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But sacrifices you make humbles you. You got, up, you got a downgrade to upgrade. So, like, that was a big change for me. I love my 4 by 4s But I said to myself, I want to make this move have to downgrade you know I stopped going out I didn't really go out like that really but like I just made different choices with my money yeah you know um, just starting to really save I never really got to save as a kid yeah especially when you're living with parents and stuff uh, one or a single mum hard to save because mm. you have to help with this help with that you know now I used to only take one holiday a year now I can take five I did that last year to like five six holidays for the year nice you know, I'm paying rent, <laughs> private rent now, you know. It's, yeah. I wish, let's say going off a little topic, uh, off topic here, but like I wish we would learn from young about oh, credit, yeah. you know, because we'd be in a whole different situation. Now, I messed up my credit from young. I've got it back to fair. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> good. I'm very poor, <laughs> but I wish I knew about it. I mean, you, you're not taught these things. And it's, it's up sad, you know, because I feel like our generation, we need that especially because of how life is now, mm -hmm. we don't have that. Some people, yeah, their parents are, yo, credit score, yo, I don't have that. And like, I wish I had that. That's yeah. why Canada's a super fresh start, bro. New credit. I know how to build it up. Always, everything kind of start again and, yeah, yeah okay, Canada's right. Start, start again, yeah. bro. We've said, like, I'm going with three, three suitcases and saving. Nice, yeah. Going off that, no. Are you, are you nervous? How, how, how do you feel about the move? I am nervous. Yeah. I am scared. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sit there. We're, we're, we're guys, we don't show emotion, but yeah. sometimes you have to. Like, I sit there and I, you know, I get a little teary eye because it's like, boy, life is about to change. Mm -hmm. A lot of things. I'm, as I'm very in the spiritual world, like when I see angel numbers, like when you think about certain things, like when I think about the move all the time, I'll, I'll see triple one, triple two. That's the angels telling me, like, yo, you're on the right path. That's what you're meant to do. Okay. You know, and I'm like, all right, yeah. cool. I know I'm on the right path. And making this move is scary, man. Mm. Uh, I can't, I can't lie. And I'm leaving my mom, you know. Mm. Uh, that's a big thing. My dad, dad died what, almost nine years ago, so just me and my mom. All my grandparents gone up, so it's just me and my mom. But thankfully, like my brother had a baby, so she's got a little like distraction from when I go. My mom, you know, she she relies on me a lot. Yeah. But you know, in life, you have to make your own decision. Like you see, like a, a herd of a. Like a lion. Yeah. Once them cubs hit a certain age, they got a cut. That's true. They don't ever stay, bro. Mm. So it's like, I got to go meet my tribe now in Canada, the States. You know, so I feel like I, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm ready for it. I just got to go spread my wings, you know. It's sad because, you know, my mom, it's my mom. Like, it's the only parent I have left. But yeah. you just have to do what you got to do. I know people that say, I don't know how you could do it. I could never leave my mom. That's like, she was going to be stuck then. No, it's you true, have yeah. To take the, the, the drive and opportunity to just do it. Because I've seen people I've been around do it, especially going from the Caribbean to the States. They've left their mum, their family. They've gone there, made a life. Mm. You know? It's just certain things you just have to do. I mean, yeah, it works out. Sometimes you can you can now provide a better life as well. Because, yeah. Because you took, you took that risk. Yeah. yeah. 100%. But yeah, I, I am definitely scared. You just, I don't have a clientele out there. Mm. I'm guaranteed money in London. Yeah. Not guaranteed money out there. I see. Yeah. So every day is like, okay, cool. How can I? That's I'm trying to find another stream of income. 
that I could do on the side. Yeah. You know? So that's why I'm looking at certain different avenues of what I can do. Um, just to, to get a bit more stream of money coming in just in case the clientele doesn't pick up. Um, I'm good. So would you would you teach? Would I teach? Yeah, yeah. I would. I wanna do a seminar. Yeah, that'd but be in cool. the Caribbean. Like I've been speaking to the guy from Tattoo Fest about doing a seminar, hopefully next year. Caribbean artists can come and you know, ask me questions, learn. Like I've seen them do it in America, so I definitely want to do it for the Caribbean. Can I get asked all the time? Can I shadow you? Like, how do you do this? If I do a seminar, it's like you all come. And I make yeah. an extra piece as well. Yeah. You know, so there's different avenues I could take with tattooing for sure. It's just putting it down, making it happen. No, I yeah. think that'd be good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So with, with your move to Toronto, um, you say it's just savings and, and a couple of suitcases. Mm-hmm. Have, you got, have you got somewhere to stay already? Yeah, I've got family that, that stay with out there. All right, nice. Stay yeah. 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 Stay with them for a little while and I hopefully get my own spot. Nice, nice, yeah. yeah. Get my own spot, hopefully. Um, it's just going to feel good to just, like, not have so much stress over my head, like, bills-wise. Because, mm. like, living in London is expensive. Canada's expensive now. Like, oh, right. it's, very, it's getting very expensive now. But I just know that there's just more to do out there that, as in expanding yourself. Yeah. Like, this, you can go to the States, bro. The States are 52 states. You can go to any state. That's true, yeah. Instagram is a big tool. TikTok's a big tool. I have people from the States always hitting me up. When you coming over, bro, I want to get in. You know, so you just gotta utilize what you have. Utilize what you have. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. And and lastly, um, what can we expect, kind of, or what what's your goals for the next kind of couple of years? Yeah, Say the next know. three fa- to five years, where where you want to be? Uh, definitely want to have my house. Definitely want a few streams of income. Mm-hmm. Want my dream car. What's what's your dream car? An X six M. That's a nice car, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want that. You see in Canada, bro, like you can, like the roads are, like there's not speed cameras like that. Okay, it's right. A, it's a policeman with a speed oh. gun. <laughs> so you can kind of have a little fun, you know. It's, it's yeah. worth having that kind of car. It's not worth having that car in London. But yeah, I'll save that. My own family. Um, yeah, I'm going to have like, probably have Canadian kids. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to have a whole <laughs> accent. <laughs> uh but, and probably like a chain of tattoo studios and yeah. doing seminars. Just be active, just not be sitting on my bum. Like that. right now, I was so excited for this because it's like, I got something else to do, not just tattooing. But yeah. tomorrow I'm back to tattooing. I see, yeah. Every day. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, just not being in the same routine. Just always having something to do. So important, man. Don't get tired in the same routine. So I feel like that would be my next three to five year goal. Mm. So a house, dream car, family, Streams of income, seminars, and chain of tattoo studios. Cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So just developing a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's good. All right, it's been it's been a pleasure, man. It's no, been thank a you for having me, man. To you. Thank where you where me. can we find you on the socials again? Just, um, uh, Dev Inks, D E V I N K Z on everything except for Twitter. Twitter is underscore. And yeah, that's it. I'm just on everything. Yeah.